Like it looks, the jacket looks like it's soaked in the outside. This is the Paramo Valais Evolution Hybrid Smock. It's a bit of a mouthful, but this is a waterproof jacket that costs £360 that some people would argue isn't actually waterproof. So what is the truth? And that is what we're going to discuss in this video, as well as the reason why I am furious at another very popular outdoor brand. So I bought this jacket 10 months ago with my own money and I've used it in all kinds of conditions since then. Warm, cold and long rainy days outdoors. So I have a good idea of how this performs. So I'm going to start by discussing the technology behind the jacket and then I'm going to talk about the pros and cons and there are a lot of pros and cons for this jacket. And then finally, I'll sort of, I'll sum up. And if you do find this video useful, why not drop me a comment in the comments and consider subscribing. If you love the outdoors, I think you're gonna love a few of the other videos on this channel. So let's start with the technology behind this jacket. And I'm just gonna quote from, from Paramo themselves. Paramo call this a directional waterproof jacket that uses the Nick Wax fabric waterproof system. What does that mean? Well, I'll read what they say. And they say, uh, Nick Wax analogy, waterproof fabric is more than breathable. It is directional. This means it's capable of moving liquid away from your body and not just water vapor. As a really interesting point here, it says in conventional clothing systems, approximately 20% of sweat production is dealt with, leaving 80% still trapped inside. So that's with the conventional waterproof. Nick Wax analogy garments are unique in that they pump out this 80% of liquid water and allow it to drain away and you're left feeling dry and comfortable. So the idea is it's made from a hydrophobic material that repels the liquid water from in to out. That's different from a conventional waterproof, which tends to use a membrane that won't allow liquid water in, but will allow water vapor out. That water vapor is created by the heat of your body and it can get out. Now, that difference is important and we'll talk about that again later. Those are the claims that Paramo makes. The question is, does it live up to that? And that's what we're gonna discuss. But first of all, I just wanna give you a quick overview of the jacket, what it's life like to wear and some of its features. It's very, very different from any waterproof I've ever worn because it doesn't have that mesh liner. There are no tape seams. It's not plasticky in the inside. It's just, it, it's made from multiple layers of fabric. On the surface here, you've got just, there's a, there's a, there's a rougher fabric and then there's a shinier fabric and there's, there's different types, there's reinforced sections. It, it doesn't look waterproof at all. The probably the most striking feature of the smock is the fact that it's got two zips and there are probably two reasons for the two zips. The first one is that it allows you to ventilate really effectively. So I can zip that all the way up like that. There's poppers in the bottom here that I can click in and that'll hold that and then you're venting heat out here. And then the other benefit of um, of this is that it gives you this pouch, there's space for a, a front pocket. And as well as holding my mic, I can, you know, I can store gloves in there. I could get a map in there. There's a lot of space on this front pocket. And that was big for me as a filmmaker because that means I could put like, different accessories. And then there are another couple of zips on the side here which turns it into a hand warmer. And this is one of my favorite features of this jacket. I can just tuck my hands in here, walk along, admiring the countryside, and oh, there's my gloves. Or I can use it as a pocket. And um, the arms fit quite tightly. As you can see, it's quite, it's quite snug in the arms, but I find it's got, there's excellent mobility there. There's, instead of pit zips, normally you would have vents here and here and other waterproof jackets, but they put them up here which i actually think is far better because when you're wearing a backpack your straps come in under here they block those vents so pit zips don't actually do that much when you're wearing a backpack whereas these vents are up on the arms so the heat can get out and when you're wearing a backpack it doesn't make any difference the cups have the cups the cuffs have a velcro tightener that i can take out and tighten it up if I want to batten down the hatches. And speaking of batten down the hatches, this is one of the most impressive hoods in any jacket I've ever worn. First of all, it has a wire peak that sticks out quite a bit over the front of your face, meaning that if your glasses wear like me, you're less likely to get rain on your glasses. Now, it starts off looking quite ridiculous, but let me just fully zip this up. It goes right up to here. You can tighten the back there, 
so that it grips your head, so that when you turn your head, the hood moves with you and your face isn't just turning inside a, a sort of a plasticky waterproof prison. Yes, the, the, this can look a little bit a little bit ridiculous. You look like a ninja, but it is the warmest and most comfortable hood um, I've ever had on a waterproof. So that's kind of it for what it's like to wear. Now, when you're out in rainy conditions, what I will notice is initially the water beads and rolls down the surface of the fabric. When I'm out for an extended period of time in wet conditions, eventually it looks like the water's soaking in and, it look, and eventually it'll look like the entire jacket is soaked. The whole surface will look wet and the jacket does become a bit heavier. But looks can be deceiving, as I'll explain in a second. So let's run through my list of pros and cons. I like to get the negative stuff out of the way to start with. So we're gonna start with the con and probably what's gonna be one of the biggest cons for most people is the price of this jacket. This retails, the recommended retail price of this jacket is 360 pounds. For that money, you could get two th or three, you know, reasonable high-end waterproof jackets, or you could get, you know, four or five really cheap budget waterproof jackets. But there is a caveat to that, again, which we will come to. It's heavier than a normal waterproof. It's bulky. It's not as packable. You can't roll it up and squash it away into like a really, really small bundle the way you can with some waterproof jackets. It does squash down quite well. It maybe squashes down similar to um, a larger down, down jacket, but it's not like a really ultra light mac and a sack type thing that you just put in your pocket. Now, this particular design can be a little bit awkward. It takes a bit of getting used to putting this on because it's got these zips. The way you get it on is you one side open and then you get one arm in and then you sort of wrap this around the front and then it hangs and flaps a bit. And then you gotta, then you gotta catch the zip. And it is a little bit awkward Ugh. zipping yourself up on the side like that, though you do get used to it. It's warmer than it looks. And in fact, this jacket is too warm for me for anything over 10 degrees C, unless it's really, really windy. It's nine degrees C today. I'm wearing a t-shirt under this as well as a really thin mid layer. And I was too warm as I, as I hiked up here. When it does rain a lot and the surface does get wet, it does add a little bit of weight to the jacket, which is slightly noticeable, but probably the con, which is where most people run into problems with Paramo products, is that this jacket requires a lot of maintenance to maintain its waterproof features it has to be cleaned regularly and has to be retreated retweeted retreat it with a uh, nick wax reproofer this is a liquid that you can wash it in the wash machine or as i like to do you can hand wash it in a bowl i like to do that to make sure it really really gets into it so it's maybe not the jacket for somebody who's lazy and doesn't like having to maintain their kit okay those are the cons let's move on to the positive side the pros it's cheaper and let me explain that. I know we just said it was really expensive, but this is a jacket that is designed to last a lifetime. I know people have Paramo products that are 20 years old and counting. I bought a Rab jacket, and this is where I'm angry. I bought a Rab soft shell jacket because I wanted a comfortable waterproof jacket and it seemed to be the best I could get. It was soft shell, it had a stretchy uh, waterproof membrane in it. Really, really comfy. I loved that jacket. But after three years, the tape seams fell apart and it just wasn't waterproof anymore. And I emailed Rab asking, you know, is this something I can send in for repair? And the response was, yeah, three years, it's pretty much at the end of its lifespan, just throw it out. A 200 pound, actually, 200, a 200 pound jacket in three years, chuck it in the bin. And that is where this becomes cheaper than a conventional waterproof because a conventional waterproof is not gonna last as long as this. This is gonna outperform a conventional waterproof two, three times. And it's also a lot more robust than a conventional waterproof. It's more tear resistant. In fact, I accidentally snagged my arm slightly on a barbed wire fence on the way in here. And where is it? Yeah. And rather than rip the jacket, it just sort of scratched along the surface. So it's definitely stronger than a normal waterproof. But also if you do manage to damage it, it's infinitely repairable. You could just, just stitch it up. There's no membrane. You know, there's no membrane. It's just all fabric. That's how it works. That's how the technology works. So you can just, just sew it back up. Or you can send it back to Paramo. He'll charge you, I think, 40 pounds for a basic tear repair. Now, I mentioned this is a con, but it is also a pro. It is a very warm jacket. It doesn't look it. It's only, you know, it feels like it's a couple of layers thick. 
but I find in practice when you're moving, this is as warm as sort of a thin, a thin down jacket. But unlike a down jacket, this can be ventilated. I can open up the pinceps, I can open up the side and dump some heat. The first time I used this for a long day in the rain, I was surprised because, you know, with a down jacket, if a down jacket gets wet, the feathers stop working and it gets cold very, very quickly. But also a conventional waterproof, if you're out for a wet day, what tends to happen is, your sweat gathers in the inside and can't escape at all because if it's raining outside, that water vapor just doesn't go anywhere. The, the rain coming down just makes it sort of condense on the surface and the inside. And when I'm soaked in the inside, I get cold. But that doesn't happen with this jacket. I found when I was out for a long, long day, four or five hours, pouring rain, that last video I made at Denormick Quarry, I wore this jacket and it has rained continuously the entire time. All I've got onto this is I've got a t-shirt and I've got a thin micro fleece. The temperature is about, it's about eight degrees Celsius, but I am totally comfortable. And towards the end of the hike, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna unzip this and see how damp it is on the inside. No, my fleece is totally dry underneath this. I would not have called that. That's incredible. Even the stuff in this pocket on the front's dry. Like it looks, the jacket looks like it's soaked in the outside. It's not, it's not bone dry on the inside, but it's, it's like mildly damp. I have ever, never, ever been this comfortable out this long in these kind of conditions. So that really blew my mind just how well this worked in those kinds of conditions. The caveat, of course, is that you have to keep it maintained, you have to clean it, you have to keep it treated, otherwise those features are gonna fail. So I guess to summarize that bit, I found that on a really, really wet day, the jacket on the outside looked like it was soaked, but on the inside, I was much drier than I would have been in a conventional waterproof, and more importantly, I was comfortable and I was warm. And of course, as this is a jacket that doesn't use PFCOs, it's better for the environment, which is always good. And my last, my last pro is something you're probably not gonna be expecting because what happens if you're outside in the rain, you're hiking along, you're getting damp, you're getting cold, what do you do? Okay, you're gonna put on your, your insulating air, layer, you're gonna take off your waterproof, you're gonna take maybe your down jacket out, you're gonna put it on, and you're gonna put the waterproof over the top. What happens when you do that? Your base layers get covered in rain because you've just taken your waterproof off. Nick Wax have reversed this, and this sounds completely paradoxical, but they say to put your insulating layer over the top, and I've got one here. This is Paramo's insulating layer, and it is designed to go over the top of their waterproof jackets. Now, this seems really, really... <laughs> Take my mic out of there. <laughs> now, this seems really, really counterintuitive because isn't this just gonna get wet? Isn't this just gonna get damp and then I'm gonna get cold? Well, yes, it would if this was something like a down jacket, but it's not. This has a synthetic insulation in it, which uses the same Nick Wax analogy technology, which means, first of all, it's designed to repel water. It's designed to transport that 80% of moisture that's coming from the inside out, out, out. But also because it's a synthetic insulation, if it does eventually get wet, it still stays warm. So it's a clever system. I was skeptical about it and I thought, you know what? I will try it out and so far I've been impressed. I haven't tried this insulating layer in really, really, really wet and cold weather yet, but I no doubt will at, uh, at some point. And this, this pack's down roughly about the size of a, a slightly bulkier down jacket. I went, for, I went for a size up with this because what I really like to do with this jacket is wear it in my tent when I'm camping. And then it feels like I'm sort of wearing, a sort of, uh, it almost feels like I'm wearing a sleeping bag very, very comfy. Okay, so there you have it, the pros and cons of this jacket. And I guess I will sum this up by saying that despite the cons of this jacket, this is hands down my favorite jacket ever. Genuinely, is my favorite jacket ever. And it does irk me slightly that I can only wear it in colder weather. I love wearing this jacket. I bought it towards the start of summer and then I wasn't able to wear it all summer. And I could not wait until I got back to winter. I'm wearing this. I 
hate it hiking in conventional waterproofs where you know it felt plasticky against your skin and you just got damp and wet and cold on the inside with this jacket it's comfortable to wear i can wear this with a t-shirt underneath and that's it you know in slightly warmer conditions or i can wear it with just a base layer it's ventilated so i can open it up and sort of extend the temperature range that i can use it in this jacket 100 percent has my endorsement and i think that Despite its high price, it's going to actually save me money long term. I'm a big believer in buying higher quality kit less. People talk about trying to reduce waste. Probably the best way to reduce waste is to buy high quality stuff that you don't need to keep replacing over time. And this really, really ticks that box for me. So I'd love to know if you have any experience with Paramo kit. Um, let me know how long you've had it for. Uh, what you've used it for and how you find that it has performed but i really hope that this video maybe helps you make a decision if you're on the fence about whether or not to try out this jacket thanks for watching hopefully you find this useful bye bye and i'll catch you in the next video